we are always at loggerheads. Since the womb we shared, force shared, not even the choice to come out on my own, unfairness everywhere. Our twin heads are always loggered with fighting and spitting and biting and yanking nails out of finger beds. We are eight now, us both. Carmel claims, outrageous lying broken record, that she is older, she is not. Just because she forced her way out the birth canal first, not a grain of manners on her even then, doesn't make her older. I sink my teeth into her skinny top arm. Skinny girl dog, always skinnier than me. I leave my best half moon of teeth upon her flesh. Carmel blood everywhere. <laughs> Never let me see you biting caramel again, do you hear me? Dad showers me in spit as though I am in need of a wash. I do as I am told. Out of sight is out of mind. And so I shove caramel down behind the velvet brown couch and the gurgling radiator. The place of dust and dark and pen lids and rusty money and dead blue bottles the size of golf balls and I sink my teeth into her skinny top arm, leave my best half moon of teeth upon her flesh, caramel blood everywhere again. <laughs> we are ten now, us both. In the dead of night, I raid her pajama drawer. Operation, stop, operation. Carmel must be stopped. The evil twin of thieving. I know, I have seen with my laser eyes that she has peeved and hid my pink Snoopy training bra in her pajama drawer where she thinks I will not look. Buried deep under fleecy snowflake bottoms, I find it. The pink Snoopy training bra. In the darkness, I smack her with it. The clasp scratches her eyeball. She screeches till I'm sure the paint will flake off the walls. We get no chocolate for a week for waking the house of slumber. Sorry, house. Not sorry, Carmel. We are 14 now, us both. I cry when I discover she is no longer a Bridget. Everyone wants a shift off Carmel. Derek Davies even fingered her down the dirty lane, but no one go near you with the barge pole. Carmel taunts. I lock myself in the mold climbing condensation bathroom. I cry and cry and shift the doorknob for practice. I bite down on the rubber shower mat for soapy relief. We are at peace mostly never, apart from at midnight. When our twin tummies grumble in unison, they are full of, full of nothing, empty as our shattered piggy banks. Are you awake? Carmel hisses across the navy dark. We stealth out of bed. We pick over creaky floorboards as though they are landmines. We are experts on our twin toes. Downstairs, we midnight feast like midnight mice. We build towers of sandwiches on Brennan's white sliced pan with butter pure and Kerrygold, with peanut butter smooth, not crunch. Do we look like the kind of people who would be crunch? And jelly, not jam, but jelly like our pen pals in the States, still too good to write us back. We smooth and scrape and dollop and slather and cut in two with a double edged knife. We scrape and flake our sister's sweat and blood every midnight feast. Our eyes glint and catch each other in the dark. Sandwiches everywhere, fairness everywhere, for once. We are 23 now, us both. Twins still, for better, for worse, for our umpteen sins. But lives diverged in a yellow wood. Carmel is, I'm not sure what, a woman in an office twiddling pointless numbers going round and round the bend on a swivel chair in tights the colour of hairless cat. I move to South America on a whim and a prayer. I find a turquoise canvas backpack underneath the stairs left over from a honeymoon my parents never went on. Sure didn't you to arrive, says Dad, pretending to be annoyed, but absolutely thrilled that Carmel and I landed on his doorstep. He drops me to Dublin airport. Tears pool in his paper thin bottom eyelids. I tell him not to worry. I am armed with my adventure streak and the turquoise canvas backpack. 
Brazil is hot and exotic and full of chicken frango blobs, 10 a day that I can't stop eating. The women are beautiful. Their radiant souls shine out through their radiant skin. I am all wrong in this place. My pies are stumpy, pasty, fat. They rub against each other in the heat. I am stony broke. I wake up every day with anxious in my stomach. The taste of nails. I meet a lad from France. Instantly, I am hooked on the smell of his neck his rubbery skin. He has bone structure, the shape of perfection, an anger in his blue raised veins. For a minute, it is postcard perfect. I move in with him into his small apartment. I smoke his small cigarettes. I am smaller too. Only my thighs have the courage to keep expanding to fill the space. It is not long till the lad from France is smack banging me up against walls. I wake up every morning with anxious in my stomach, the taste of nails. It is slipping from me, who I am. All I can remember is we are twins, me and Carmel, for better, for worse, for our umpteen sins. One day when the lad from France is at work, or out smack banging a woman I do not know up against walls of another house. A letter arrives in Carmel's neat, clean, crisp scrawl. Her excitement bursts off the page. It squirts me in the face like factor 50 sun cream I have not been wearing. She wants to open a portable sandwich van full of festival promise and sandwiches. We will smooth and slather and dollop and scrape and cut in two with a double-edged knife. We will scrape and flake our sister sweat and tears into each midnight sandwich. The midnight sandwich, we will call it. The messages come home, come home at the speed of humanly possible to the place where memories wet you in the face like a slapped fish. I have a glut of courage lodged in the back of my throat. I pack the turquoise canvas bag. Trasman and Dunta, dull sheer, dull sheer. Dad meets me at Dublin airport. Tears once again pool in his paper thin bottom eyelids. We should get back. Carmel's keen to see you. I buy three dairy milks for the road. I am buzzing off the home sweet home. Back at the house, shock swims through my veins like upstream salmon. Carmel is in bed, downstairs now. She is thin, barely there, skinny girl dog, so skinny, always skinnier than me. Her face has shrunk inside her skin. She is sorry to get my hopes up, she says. The midnight sandwich will have to go on the back burner. She is sick, sick as a dog, an illness having gone to the quick of her bones. She is sorry to have gotten my hopes up, to have skyrocketed them. Karma, outrageous lying, broken record. Always lying, always dying, always trying to trick me. You cannot, you'll be grand, I say. She has a request. Would I make her one? A midnight sandwich on Brennan's white sliced pan with butter, real and Kerrygold, with peanut butter, smooth, not crunch. Do we look like the kind of people who would be crunch? And jelly, not jam, but jelly, like our pen pals in the States, still too good to write us back. Make it yourself, I want to screech. But I don't. I oblige her. I make her one last midnight sandwich. We're 26 now, us both, twins, 
still, for better, for worse, for our umpteen sins, except there is no more karma. The illness having scrubbed her out as though she was a stain on this earth. I wake up every morning with anxious in my stomach, the taste of nails. I am full of, full of nothing. All I have is sandwiches. I smooth and scrape and dollop and slather and cut in two with a double-edged knife. I scrape and flake my sister's sweat and tears into every midnight sandwich and think of karma. Thank you.